what if modern culture are really a myth? And if you go to a museum and you don't relate to the art, or you go to an opera or a classical concert and you don't relate to it, is it part of your culture? If a vast majority of citizens of any particular nation don't relate to it, if it's something that people see as either too highbrow or too old or too new or out of fashion or etc etc is it still culture so i was eating dinner this evening and i watched an interesting video on pizza how it was brought back to italy i'll link it below it's really good but it got me thinking one of the premises of the video was that much of the food culture of Italy actually developed or morphed and came back to Italy from America. Which is absolutely true. You know, at the time that Italy was founded as a nation, I believe it was 1861, you know, from disparate city-states, sometimes controlled by parties outside of Italy, sometimes by the Pope. These lands hadn't been together since after the fall of the Roman Empire. And Odasser took the kingdom of Italy instead of declaring himself an emperor of Rome. Italy was only really in its history, in its thousands of years of history, were only unified for a very small fraction of that time. And really not until Rome went and bruised and bloodied much of the Italian peninsula. Similarly, look at England. England wasn't a unified force until the Norman conquests. Alfred had a vision of a unified England, but it didn't exist in his time. I mean, in some ways you could say he created England, but it didn't exist. Look at Germany. The fact is, most of the world didn't start creating the modern nation states that we know today until the 19th century. Some weren't created until even later than that after some of the wars. So, again, going back to this video on pizza, another part of the premise is that sometimes countries and nations form a culture from one that did not necessarily exist before, for various reasons, and you can watch the video for more information on that. But if a lot of the things that we call culture, or at least modern culture, circa everything after, I don't know, Victorian, Edwardian periods, something like that. Post-industrialization, to be sure. The idea of culture is diverse and dynamic and filled with migrations and trade from places far and wide. It's always been that way. The earliest humans were very migratory. Humans love travel. But much of modern culture, at least in a country like America, and I'm specifically speaking now about Canada and more specifically America, United States, because that's what most of this audience of mine are, Americans and Canadians, and also because I simply don't have the knowledge base to speak about this in other countries, other than just brief examples like I just gave. You know, Germany didn't unify until the 19th century. Italy, even countries like France, you know, for a long period of their history, it was under either Norman or English rule in places, and or German for that matter. A, a lot of the modern states, at least in Western civilization, are relatively new or grew or morphed as time went on. In that adoption and that adaptation and that appropriation has been happening since time immemorial. People have always taken ideas from others. We do it individually and we do it as society. But since World War II, most of the culture or society that most of us experience wasn't even created until after World War II or through the mechanism of rapid industrialization during World War II that our modern culture and society exists today. For better 
or for worse. I would argue the latter. Most Americans don't have an affinity towards or influence from historical culture. Most Americans also don't understand any society but the current contemporary society. Schools used to fund things like art and art appreciation and art history in music, in choir, in dance, in languages. A lot of schools got rid of anything that was considered non-essential. Non-essential to whom, you may ask, but that's a topic for another video. Such as, Americans don't like to talk about money. Watch that next. Every American needs to see that video. Seriously. But we how many Americans go to museums on a regular basis? How many really understand or appreciate or can get the value of art? Other than seeing a nice picture and like, eh, okay, that's nice, you know? And move on to the next. It's not within our culture because for so many of us, it wasn't something we grew up on. It wasn't something that we were exposed to. Unless your family watched tons of PBS, most poor or middle class, or even lower upper class, Americans just weren't exposed to these things growing up. The rich were. The rich were the only ones who were. And they were the patrons of the museums and often bought one-of-a-kind pieces of art that they put in their own private installations that no one else could see or appreciate. Is that culture? Most of us aren't stupid enough to think the way things are are the way things always have been. People know that cars were invented back in the late 19th century. Most Americans know that electricity wasn't a thing until the 19th century. But do we truly appreciate how much of the world has changed and how much America has changed just in the past 50, 60, 75 years? If you wonder why New Jersey and California and everything in between looks the same. And why you can go to a hotel and they all look the same. And they're all built with really thin walls and you can hear every single door slam. Or why every single town has a Dollar General and every single city has the same stores. You can go to any rich area in America and they will have different stores but every rich area will pretty much have the same stores themselves. There's a monotony to America. There isn't the flourishes in history and aesthetics and appreciation that other places have. We don't have and are not afforded to have the same opportunities as the rich or people in other countries. And that's a shame. Imagine if Every musician had the opportunity to learn their trade and perform it at the government expense. And every painter afforded the same opportunities. And every writer and every actor and any creative person could do what they wanted at the expense of the government. There should be museums and art exhibits and concert halls and dance halls in every community like there used to be generations ago. Every town needs more than just sports or churches. Every town needs libraries, just as they do clinics and hospitals. Every American deserves these things. You hear all the time of places losing doctors, and nurses, and hospitals, and libraries, and grocery stores. Some communities don't even have any gas stations, which with climate change is probably not a bad thing, but for them it's very difficult way of life when they don't have any other transportation. Everything is difficult for everyone. And there are so many things we're missing out on. A lot of the traditional network television stations aren't doing original content anymore. Everything is reality-based or reality game to save money. At this juncture, at this precipice, with everything going on in the world, we all deserve a break. Everything should be a little bit easier for everyone. And everyone deserves the opportunity to be exposed to and learn from culture and society. 
and everyone should be able to contribute to that culture and society moving forward, learning from past examples, both good and bad, and understanding our place in time and the universe. Then we can truly have a culture and society that we're really proud of. This whole endeavor is what I call the Renaissance spirit. More than just the philosophy, more than just the style, but a philosophy in style for living, growing, learning, and thinking. Take the quiz now to see if you're a Renaissance spirit and live the Renaissance spirit.